Lost is the greatest TV show of all time, and while that might sound like an opinion, I'm pretty sure it's a fact. And sure, there is the regular, oh, the ending sucked narrative, but as somebody who has talked about Lost a whole lot, nobody who I have ever heard say that the ending was bad has ever actually watched the show to the end. It's like this weird old wives tale, how your parents used to tell you that if you cross your eyes outside and the wind changes direction, your eyes will stay like that, or cracking your knuckles will give you arthritis. People just hear people say that and repeat it, and repeat it, and it spreads like wildfire, even though it's not true. Very few people, if any, that I have spoken to who actually watched Lost to the End thought it was a terrible ending. Anyway, thanks to Lost being put on Netflix in the US and the UK this summer, it's gaining some sort of a resurgence, and people are really starting to appreciate it for the goated TV show that it has always been. I, for one, am forcing everyone I know to watch it and getting an excellent response from them. With that in mind, I'm gonna rank all six seasons of the show on a tier list, and for what it's worth, I have never ever heard two people have the same opinion on how these seasons rank. So if you're a fan, there is a good chance you will disagree with me, so feel free to tell me in the comments and we can get into it like Jack and Locke. Season one of Lost has the greatest pilot ever made. Still to this day, 20 years later, no pilot is better. The way that you are thrown right into the action but still left wanting so much more, with the characters that you meet and the mysteries that present themselves, like the monster, or the polar bear, or the French recording that's been going on a loop for 16 years. Granted, some of that comes in the second part of the pilot, but it still counts, okay? The Lost Pilot changed the course of TV forever. And that's beyond debate, okay? TV was like mostly episodic before, where every episode had a self-contained story and you could just jump in to any episode at random and still kind of catch up and follow along. But Lost serialized everything. Episode 7 of Lost doesn't make sense without the previous six episodes. You can't just drop into it. And so shows like Prison Break and Heroes and Breaking Bad, all of these great dramas owe that format and that reliance to the season long plot points. They owe it all to Lost and, and maybe a little bit 24, but, but mostly Lost. When season one of Lost aired, it was in an era when you would watch TV shows week to week and it was great. But today, binging it, watching three or four of these episodes back to back, it really lets you appreciate how brilliantly every character is crafted. Like, all of their backstories are interesting enough that they could be their own plots, rather than just flashbacks if they wanted. From Shannon to Charlie to Locke to Kate to Michael to Son, they all have significant motivations, significant flaws, meaningful growth, and they all contribute to the plot. And the dialogue, oh my goodness, the dialogue. There are so many incredible exchanges between characters, and so many amazing monologues. And it's, it's so delicately crafted how the dialogue reflects the themes of the episode, but also the wider show. Like, I honestly feel like season one of Lost should be studied by anyone who ever wants to write. It, it genuinely, it feels like the perfect opening season to a drama for me. And look, I know some people might say there's like fluff and filler, right? There's an episode where they build a golf course, for example. And to those people, I say Lost is a character-driven drama. Sure, the plot is wild, and there's so many amazing and engaging mysteries, but Lost is character-driven at its core. So the so-called filler episodes move the characters along perfectly in their stories, and it gets them to where they need to be for the big moments. And for that reason, I don't think you can call these filler. These episodes are essential. Plus, like, it can't all be polar bears and monsters, right? Sometimes you need to stop and you need to breathe for a second. And golf episodes are great for giving you those breathing moments. Anyway, if you can't tell by now, season one of Lost is going in God tier, okay? It's clear of any other season of TV. I've got mixed feelings about season two of Lost, okay? And I think that's quite common because I feel like season two is quite Marmite, right? People love it or hate it, particularly on their first one or two watches through the show. Yes, Lost is a show that you will fall in love with and watch four, five, six, 10 times, okay? So sometimes I really love season two. It introduced some characters that I am obsessed with. Desmond, who is my absolute favorite, Mr. Echo, who I adore. And it has some of the most amazing, suspenseful and gasp inducing moments. Like the Henry Gale arc is amazing. The Anna Lucia and Shannon moment, the Michael Libby Anna Lucia moments. I'm trying to be vague and not give any spoilers away in case anyone watching this hasn't seen it, but specific enough. So if you have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it has, incredible moments. Plus, the way season two deals with the politics of like who leads the group 
now that they're somewhat divided in two places. And the way that it handles science versus faith, which is such a prevalent theme through the entire show, it does it so well. And season two is great for that, like laying the theming foundations for the rest of the show, introducing ideas and feelings that will really flower and build over the following four seasons, right to when the show finishes. However, where I love that season one was so character driven, season two is in the same way, except that Due to things out of the writer's control, some of the character work that they laid kind of felt wasted because characters never really amounted to anything. Some of the actors get into trouble with the law, some left for personal reasons, and so these foundations they lay for these amazing characters don't reach their potential. So in retrospect, they end up kind of falling flat. I find myself looking back on it and thinking, all the work they put into the tail section how much of an impact do any of them and their story really have on the overall show? Plus, I think season two, particularly in the back end, is where we really start to see Kate go from an amazing character, deep, intricate, flawed, complex, to just sort of being the object of a love triangle and very little else. Like, I love the season, but there are too many flaws for it to be God tier. So for me, I'm sort of torn between A tier and B tier. It's like, it's on the cusp. I think it's probably a really high B tier. Like if this was scored out of 100, it would be like a half mark away from being A tier. Season three can be frustrating with how much the characters just dilly dally, particularly at the beginning, okay? The urgency has gone. It's like they realized, okay, we crashed and Lord knows what crazy stuff is going on here, but it's a nice exotic island with a beautiful beach and more crazy stuff is gonna keep happening, so let's just chill and let it happen. Maybe Shannon had the right idea after all. Get out of your sunscreen, stop worrying so much. That's how the first half of season three kind of feels, at least for those who are still at the beach. I will say that season three does a great job of deepening the lore of the show. Like season two ends on this incredible line, we're the good guys, and season three from its opening scene does an incredible job of just building and expanding on that. And so where people think Lost is just about mystery after mystery, question after question without answers, Season three is actually kind of a great season for appeasing a bunch of those questions and giving answers, kind of, while still offering new mysteries and twists to whet your appetite. Plus, with Ben being Ben and him often being the one explaining things, there's that added layer of him being entirely unreliable and just lying all the time. I will say season three has some of the greatest moments in the whole show. Like what they do with Desmond's character in season three, Amazing. And let's not beat around the bush here, okay? Season three has the absolute best season finale. I can't go into any more detail about it without giving any spoilers away, but there are two major moments in this finale that are all time great TV moments. Like the back end of season three is peak lost. And so for that reason, it kind of has to go above season two and into the A tier. If the opening six or seven episodes were better, it could genuinely have been God tier. So a lot of people I've spoken to have said season four is their absolute favorite, and, and I do see the merit. I think the characters from the freighter are very compelling. Daniel is one of my favorites. I also think the twist with Kevin Johnson is needed because of how abrupt his character's arc apparently ended before. Plus, the episode The Constant is the greatest episode of TV ever made, and I don't even think it's close. No other episode of TV has made me feel what that episode made me feel. Truly genius, both in terms of plot and character. So with all of that said, you might think I'm putting season four into God tier, but I'm not. Season four shares a lot of flaws that I will repeat for season six. Where I expressed how I love that Lost is character driven earlier, season four kind of loses a bit of that. Like previously, it felt like these characters are who they are. They do what they do and the plot unfolds based on their decisions and actions, which are all true to who they are established as being. That is the best way, in my opinion, to write. It's how the early seasons of Game of Thrones were written. Good, complex, well-written, flawed characters put in situations to make decisions, and those decisions impact how the plot unfolds. It gives you a deep connection to the characters, and it makes you care more about how the story impacts them. And the plot itself just unravels at a really organic pace, based on the characters and what they're doing. Season four of Lost kind of feels like the plot is just sort of happening to them. It's very, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. Now, granted, Lost moves from being 25 episodes long in season one, 24 in season two, 23 in season three, to now being 14 episodes in season four. So some of those breather moments that I was talking about earlier that are considered filler, they get lost. And so it all gets a bit plot heavy. But just everything with Locke and the Oceanic Six and the group from the freighter and Keevy and his men, it's all very 
plot point, plot point, plot point, plot point. Like, like, forgive me for comparing it to Game of Thrones again, but it's like how the earlier seasons would have whole episodes or seasons where characters are just traveling across the country slowly, and what happens to them happens to them, right? Whereas in the final couple of seasons, if Jon says he's going from Winterfell to Dragonstone, then by the next episode, he's there. And so the plot is just the Night King gets past the wall in the north and everyone goes to Winterfell and then the Long Night happens and the Night King falls and Daenerys goes to fight the Iron Fleet and the Iron Fleet falls and then Daenerys goes to King's Landing and then she burns the city and... It's just so much crammed into so few episodes and it's like box ticking plot points, right? Like the writers just need to hit this plot point, then this plot point, then this plot point, until they've done them all, with no care about how they get through them. Season four of Lost kind of feels a bit like that, though much less extreme than Game of Thrones. Like I'm used to the characters being handled with such care. So in season four, when they're just shimmied down this path, it gets a little bit frustrating. I guess it's like if you were playing an open world video game and then suddenly it's really linear. Like if you ever played Final Fantasy XV and the first half of the game is very open world and then it's, you jump to this place that looks like Venice and it's like, you have to just do these things in this order. I feel like I've gone off on lots of tangents and given you loads of examples. Season four is going in B tier, okay? The constant is doing a lot of carrying here though. If not for that episode, it could be C tier. Season 5 is a whirlwind. So much happens, but not necessarily in the same way as Season 4. Though there is a little bit of that plot points just sort of happening that goes on at times. But I will say in Season 5, those plot point moments are well balanced with great character moments. I mean like Le Fleur and Juliet. This season makes them my favourite couple in the whole show. Jack also shows a lot of his character growth in season five, which I love. And I do think on rewatches, when you know what's going on with John Locke in particular, this season is really strong. Plus where I said season three gives you lots of answers to mysteries, but in a kind of unreliable way, season five starts to give you them in a more reliable way. So if you're the kind of person who needs your loose ends tied up and you like your lore, season five is gonna be a great season for that. And as somebody who makes videos explaining the lore of Lost over on TikTok, I am the kind of person who likes making sense of these mysteries. Plus, season five really leans into the sci-fi elements, which I am a big fan of. We get so much more of the mysterious Dharma Initiative and the others. Like, I really like season five. I'm gonna say it's an A-tier season for me. Not quite up to the heights of season one, but not too far off it either. The final season. I think The Lost has got the perfect ending. I truly, truly love it. I think it's done tastefully and beautifully and respectfully. I really genuinely wouldn't change a thing about the ending, but I would change some of season six though, particularly on rewatches. I think six is all over the place. Like I love Ab Eterno and Beyond the Sea giving us a deeper dive into the mysterious history of the island and why the things that happen, happen. But there's some of it that just feels like they had to hit an episode quota, you know, and they're just doing things to do things. Claire's entire arc and Saeed's entire arc, and by extension, the arc with the temple kind of feels meh. I don't want to say pointless, but also there's not a whole lot of point to it. I just think all the moving parts of season six make sense. I just don't like how they move or necessarily how they come together. Either I would have wanted an additional season so they could flesh some of it out, like the temple, for example, to make it more meaningful or just drop it all together. With those complaints out of the way, the way season six ends, the way the show ends, how each of our characters complete their journeys, it is truly beautiful and a fulfilling end to the journey of Lost. The themes are respected, the final scene is gorgeous, it's an A tier season. If I didn't like the ending so much, it would definitely be in B or C tier, but with a little bit of sentimentality carrying it, it's in A. And if you're a fan of Lost and you've been thinking maybe they should bring it back because they bring everything else back, in this video I talk about Lost spin-off ideas and whether I think they're a good idea or not.